was out to get you breathe in begin again you'll never have all the answers but life's still about taking chances close your eyes Voices that lie to you, they're never the real you You will rise stronger than before In time you'll fight We're all fighting battles, sometimes you'll unravel When you're lost in emotion, come back to this moment Taking chances Close your eyes Open your heart Say goodbye To the voices that lie to you They're never the real you You will rise Stronger than before In time you'll find Battles sometimes unravel when you're lost in emotion. Come back to this moment and begin again. Hello. Good morning, everyone. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Asam Nilgai, the Registrar, Directors, Dean, HOD, Faculty and Staff. LFC executive, students, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to say welcome to the Vice Chancellor and the Registrar Directors and each one of us here this morning. The library, the LFC and I Sincerely appreciate you all for taking time off of your busy, respective schedules to honor this event. Indeed, we shall rejoice and rejoice on this day because it is the one that the Lord has made. The university instituted the celebration of Children's Day for the past three years as part of the promotional drive to create awareness as well as increase the use of the reading materials and services available in the library. The year celebration, which is under the team, making research actionable and visible, is unique in the sense that it is also being used to launch the much-awaited institutional repository that ATU info have and the library on the call. Children's preparation have been going on to come out with the IR and the Chronicle. Today I stand before you and I'm glad to announce to you that the IR, as a reservoir for storage of intellectual output of the university, 
as well as the project for documenting the library's activities and disseminating library's information to the investing community is ready to be applauded. We are also guided here to honor the best record of the library department for the year 2022 by presenting a certificate to the design staff. The best worker award scheme, which was instituted in 2020, came at honoring one design staff at the end of every year for meritorious service to encourage staff in the department to work harder. And in collaboration with the LRC also to celebrate the National Chocolate Day. I must say that it has been a monstrous and long journey to have come this far. But thanks to the Provice, the Vice Chancellor and the management of the university who make sure that these vulnerable projects come into fruition. According to American astronomer, how it will suffer. Books permit us to voyage through times, to tell the wisdom of our ancestors. The library connects us with the insights and knowledge, painful extracted from the nature of the greatest mind, greatest mind that ever were. With the best teachers drawn from the entire planet from all our history, to instruct us without tiring and to inspire us to make our own contribution to the collective knowledge of the human species. I think the health of our civilization, the depth of our awareness about the underpinnings of our culture and our concern for the future can all be tested by how well we support our libraries on course. In conclusion, I want to add that research, as you know, is the bedrock of development, industrialization, and technology. For this reason, I urge you all, members of the university community, to continue to take interest in what the library does and the resources that remain available so that it will boost your studies, academic way, as a university thereby making ATU a global center of excellence in research. Vice Chancellor, distinguished guest, since we are here in the season of love, I wish you all a big Valentine's Day. Once again, thanks for coming our invitation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. Let's take interest in what the library does. Okay. Our person for this memorable event is no other person than our own Vice Chancellor of Accra Technical University. We are highly privileged to be your child. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, you have said so much. I'm not sure I miss out out to all those beautiful words. But thank you. At least for the sake of the program, it's good. God bless you. <laughs> Our registrar, Director of Finance, University Liberian. Directors and deans, heads of departments. We have a technical universities um, teachers association of Ghana. We have the chairman here. We have the vice. We have the organizer. We are here. We also have the technical universities. Senior chairman is also here. And I can see a lot of our staff beautifully dressed. I saw is here, the president and team. Wonderful. Um, our staff, we
we salute you. Those of our students, they are looking beautiful. Um, today is a great day. Happy Valentine's Day. It gives me great pleasure to be with you this morning on 14th of February 2023. Fortunately for me, I have a wonderfully prepared speech. So I will be about the bush. I will go straight. I'm sure that will help us. Libraries generally are storehouses of knowledge in an academic institution like ours. And we dare say that they are even more. They are a treasure trove of information. As a heart of information, the role of library cannot be overlooked. That is why we are here today. As the great man, Dr. S. R. Ramgarnathan, father of library and information science, philosopher and mathematician, once said in 1931, library is a growing organism. It means you can keep growing or you can kill it. That statement you made in 1931 has become even more relevant as more and more the need to innovate and take advantage of new technology to support teaching, learning and research has become imperative. It is in the light, it is in this light that today, on our vows day, we have gathered here. Not just to show case the library, but to also launch two new products that the library has developed. They are the ATU Info Hub and the ATU Library Chronicle. Apart from managing and enabling access to information and information resources, the library has the prime task of preserving knowledge. There's the need for an archive. I believe we all know archives. Okay. In the absence of a physical, and this is critical, of a physical traditional type of archive that we are used to as a library, it has become necessary to have a digital archive to remain current and to the line of the big boys in academia. It is for this reason that management did not hesitate to subscribe to this proposal to establish the institutional repository that the ATU Info Hub. The ATU Info Hub will serve as a digital archive for preserving intellectual works of the university with the repository. We will not have to worry our heads anymore about finding space in our library to preserve three hard copies of each student's project work. An additional benefit is the visibility this gives to both our faculty, that's faculty members, teaching staff, and the university itself. And let me add, even to our students who undertake the projects. As a quality assurance unit is working assiduously to get the ATU onto the Times Higher Education and other ranking institutions, the Info Hub is one of the ways that these ranking institutions can harvest information because they will get the information on our university there. Thus, it is a good initiative and it has come to stay. I am told there is enough space on the info hub to house all digital outputs of the university. I will encourage all departments in the university, not just the academic, that's teaching, to submit their works, not just research work, but all works that can market the institution to the repository. We have to support the repository and send our work there. Definitely, every new technology 
goes through different stages of adoption, different stages during its growth, and they come with attendant challenges, which become surmountable when the value and benefit of the technology becomes evident. I believe that the teething challenges realized in the info hub with regard to students' project work submission will soon be a thing of the past. The second product we are launching today is the ATU Library Chronicle. That is to keep us updated on activities and events of the university library. No matter how libraries respond to the needs of their users, without an aggressive, systematic, and determined program of publicity to stimulate, inform, and attract their patrons, their value will hardly be appreciated. As such, the ATU Library Chronicle is not only an avenue for documenting activities of the library, but also for marketing the library to the university community and the outside world. I take this opportunity on this Valve's Day to congratulate the university library staff. First of all, to the university librarian herself, Dr. Florence Blocky. Please, let me see you. Thank you for your hard work, the innovation, the great initiative. We really appreciate you on this day and we commend your work. We also thank your staff for the very high level of dedication to the starting of their duties. I believe that your staff will also help the university community very well. I encourage all staff and students of the university to take advantage, especially of the info hub, and make it worth the investment. I wish the staff of the university library very well. As I said, long live ATU. I wish all of us happy Vows Day, and I wish we will all get the job in the world in India. God bless you so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Indeed, you will get the job in before we leave. Thank you very much. The Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, the best in the country, faculty and staff, our dear students. I'm here today to represent, not to uh, step in for the guest speaker. I was asked to do this only yesterday, but being a friend of the library and also working in the library for the past 30 years before I retired in 19, uh, 2021. I have accepted the offer and to, for completeness, I'm just going to give some remarks in regards to the institutional repository. So don't expect uh, a speech from me, I just some remarks uh, so that we can continue. So I have this presentation. The presentation, the, uh, this will be my outline. I will briefly define the institutional repository I'll move on to mention some few benefits of institutional repository. And again, uh, some features of the institutional repository. And quite actually go into an IR. IR is information repository, institutional repository. And then I'll also uh, touch on IR policy, which is very important. But uh, for any system, we do expect some challenges, but we know we'll be able to overcome the challenges. So I also touch on that, and then I draw some conclusion. It's a tall list, but uh, I can assure you it's going to be great. So uh, what is an institutional repository? Basically, the institutional repository uh, refers to the output of an institution in a digital format or digital archive. Uh, the Vice Chancellor actually touched on that. So if you can look at, see some of the key words that I have, it's just a collection of articles, books, chapters, conference, presentation, technical reports, 
and any other foreign material that a researcher is a bill is produced at the university or any other institution. The institutional repositories are normally hosted by libraries. So I am not surprised, and I think you are also not surprised the university library is hosting the institutional repository. Uh, basically, uh, uh, the, okay, yeah, let's move on. So what are some of the benefits of the institutional repository? Uh, the vice chancellor has already mentioned some of them, but I have some few uh, that I want to add. Uh, it's actually trying to bring together all the uh, research outputs of uh, departments and other disciplines so that we will be able to have a central place where we can be assessed. Secondly, visibility uh, and ranking. Over the years, you uh, see KN, USD, University uh, of Ghana, uh, Cape Coast, they came in as a surprise. But uh, all these things, it depends on what the institution is able to produce. So with the institutional repository, uh, it makes the institution visible. And then when it comes to the university ranking, uh, will not be left out. This is the beginning. So I know within the shortest possible time, with the cooperation of students, faculty, and staff, we'll be able to be ranked at a certain point. Again, it shows who is publishing in an institution. When it comes to the, uh, the, the demo, uh, as soon as you open the page, it will tell you who within the institution is stopping the list. So, uh, for example, if uh, you want to be promoted, instead of we asking you to submit all your publication, uh, the computer can just look at the site and then uh, either to promote you or not, or give you some points. So I will encourage all to be able to make your work visible. Even if it's a draft form, the uh, IR can uh, be hosted, uh, can be hosted. Again, uh, most of the publications are held elsewhere, and they insist that we we'll have to publish them. Yes, but we know we belong to an institution, and we use the resources of the institution to get an output published elsewhere. So I think uh, this will give us an opportunity to uh, make our work visible. Again, uh, as you can see, once you have one point to assess all these documents, then we are talking about efficiency and then the cost reduction, uh, which is very simple to do. And then we are also trying to preserve all our scholarly work. What it means that if you have a paper somewhere else, we are not, uh, the library is going to collaborate with you, and then we have it within the institutional repository. As they move forward, the work will not be done by only the library. What is going to happen is that the library is going to assign people to you. They can allow you to submit the work, and then they can go to and they have it completed. So uh, the next one, we have the features of the institutional repository. So, uh, what are some of the features? But before I move on, IRs are organized to accommodate on the display and organizational needs of a large institution. What it means is that within an institution, for example, ATU, we have different departments, we have different disciplines, and then we also have administrative uh, departments. So, we can use it to organize our resources and then it comes a uh, one of where we can all access all this information. So uh, our, our, what we have our are made up of communities, top communities and their collections. These are very important, these three elements. 
we have communities, sub communities, and then collections. Communities are groups that contribute content to the repository. For example, we can say we have faculty of engineering. If I get it wrong, please forgive me. Yeah, so that would be a community. And then within community uh, uh, faculty, we have departments. So that becomes a uh, sub community. And then we move down to the actual collection that we have within the uh, community. So communities are groups that collaborate content with the repository. And again, collections have the individual content item or part. Uh, I don't know whether you can see the so the diagram is what I actually or the figure is what I have already explained. So I will share this with the librarian and it will be then I will have to call. So I'm giving a typical example of an RRTC community. If you uh, look at the top, we have thesis as community. And then we have the uh, sub-communities within the uh, community uh, that doctoral and master. And then we move down to the collection. So this is how the IR is actually structured. Okay. So what actually what goes into IR? Uh, we've already mentioned research materials. Uh, that's number one. And then we are talking about heritage materials. Uh, heritage materials are historical documents within an institution. Uh, for example, photographs. Why was ETU established? What are some of the uh, rare records that we have within ETU? These are things that we call uh, heritage materials. So we can also complete this. Uh, when we started that of the University of Ghana, uh, we had we had a sponsorship from Tropical Royal Tropical Institute of Netherlands. So uh, they came in and they were interested in heritage materials. So we had to go back to uh, those that are published in 18th and then the 17th. Very old, old documents. And from there, we move on to the research materials. So we are not limited into only the research materials. So, by chance, that if there are very important documents, uh, we can also put in the title. Again, uh, institutional memory. Uh, when we say institutional memory, it has different dimensions. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, people work and then we go. There are a lot of memos, documents that are sitting somewhere. These are things that we have to also make sure that we have them in an IR. Last but not least, institutional records. Uh, a major challenge that we have within the institutions are records. You move a file today, and then a file can be kept elsewhere for days. And they also they can get missing. So we have to also make sure that we are able to actually have our records digitized and then make them accessible. But we, we know records cannot be given to any you can just go to the registrar's office and call for your file. I don't think the registrar will even allow you to do that. So this will be a restricted asset. We can do it in such a way that we have it within the institution. And if my uh, IT director is here, we use only the uh, private IP so that it will not be accessible to all. We can also put other uh, access control so that it will be available to only those who have the right to do that. But that requires a lot of investment. 
the investor day, you should be able to have high end, high end or production standards so that we are able to stand all these problems. So if you want to move to that direction, you have to make sure that you have the resources to support the project. And our policy, whatever we are doing here, if it's not approved by the investment management, then we are going to be in trouble. I have policy that I mean, normally should have come before we even start. But now that we have it here to protect the Liberian or others not to arise the family. Excuse me for using a, a very strong way. So that if there are policies that want to upload the document, they can point you to page five, please. Read the five. The five says they can only accept these materials in our IR. So institutional repository policy is very that who can use the service, what type of content is there, terms and conditions, and then access and uh, preservation of truth. So this is very important. I don't know whether the librarian has already finished with the policy. Uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor, once it gets to your table, get a complete uh, look at it from all and faculty, students, and their staff, so that it becomes our working document and the library is always protected. For any system or any project, we expect to have some challenges. But we know that challenges. But that doesn't prevent us from uh, moving on. So I have uh, the first one is resource constraint. The librarian has not mentioned it to me, but uh, we have been restricted. I hope he's getting everything. But this is the beginning. And I uh, have the management of the library. Lack of technical expertise. The mandate for the library is to upload and make the content visible. So for this technical, uh, I'm talking about IT. So you have to work in collaboration with the IT. The library, uh, what they want to do is that they want to upload their records. The partners normally are done by the library, uh, by the IT, and if there are any technical challenges, the IT I know the matter will uh, support it. No adaption rates. Uh, this is rare. Uh, we have to double up so that we'll be able to uh, succeed. But uh, there's one thing that we have to be careful copyright. So uh, within the IR policy, I don't know the copyright of uh, the investor. We have to make sure that uh, we don't endanger our island. Uh, whatever goes into it is properly checked. So I will conclude by saying that uh, I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm also glad to be part of the team. We are always available to support and to support the library and support the institution. Thank you very much. Together with the University Library, our friend from Southern Chartered, a librarian from Central, the rep of students in the Western we present to you the Accra Technical University Library Info Hour. I look at my dressing very well, huh? Yeah. Okay. It's a memorial. <laughs> so, this is the second one. The ATU Library Chronicle. 
So the match book I will present to you. So you are the primary audience and the first to see. Congratulations to the library. Congratulations to all of you. A good job. Man. Okay, I will take this. This is a very technical one. 
So, an institutional repository, basically, is just a digital space. Okay? It's just a digital space where you are going to store research. You are leaving this place with that understanding. It's just a digital space where you store research. And as far as info hub is concerned, we are talking about research emanating from NTU. Nothing else. Okay? So we are not looking at you research coming from Lagon, KNUSD, UCC, etc. Info hub is just going to concentrate on marketing research produced in ATU. That is it. Okay. So why info hub? So we decided that I mean research coming from ATU, there's no space that we can really point somebody to that this is the research output of ATU faculty, ATU students, etc. So that brought about the idea of setting up this space. Okay. So why info hub? The first point is that we needed a central hub where we can keep everything. Then we also thought about in this day and age where all universities are contributing to the body of research, we must be part of that project. Okay, so AT is going to showcase that intellectual output coming out of uh, AT. Okay, that's what info are is going to do. Okay. So, so there are several other things that um, we've also talked about the fact that we know our faculty members publish in several journals. Okay? So what we are doing is that we are complementing the work that they are doing. So that if you publish in any journal, we are saying put your work also on InfoHub so that it will increase your visibility and increase the visibility of the institution as well. So that is what uh, it, uh, Info Hub is going to do. Now, okay, so we are saying increase the visibility of research, identify and increase institutional expertise. When we are seeking funding from outside bodies, we need to tell them what we are producing. So InfoHub is going to tell funders out there that we are very dominant in this research area. When they look at the info that we've captured in InfoHub. So it's going to identify our expertise in certain subject areas. Then also it's going to preserve the research that we, ge we generate in ATU. That's very key. Preservation of that research. Okay, then we are also saying that InfoHub is going to present to funders, mental bodies, etc., tangible uh, symbols of what research work, academic work is carried out in ATU. So that if we are dealing with government, for instance, we can tell government that in this year, for instance, this is the amount of research articles that have been published by our faculty. These are the number of theses that our students have been able to produce. Okay, so what are the contents of InfoHub so far? So far we've identified these collections, book chapters produced by our faculty, books that they offer, conference proceedings of our faculty, research articles of faculty, and then last but not the least, this is a project work of our students. So we are going to capture all these things on InfoHub. Okay, so going forward, how are we going to manage InfoHub? So as I indicated, I am coming from University of Ghana. I've helped my colleagues to set up this. But the thing is that, as the said earlier on, even though InfoHub is in the library, for it to grow and survive, it needs strong IT support. So, since our boss himself is here, the VC is here, we need one senior person at the top, IT managing, and also one senior person 
from the library or collaborating, particularly a collaborative way. I think I don't handle it alone. Library cannot handle it alone. So they need to team up together and make sure this grows. Ben, Mr. Ben, you talked about, Mr. Ben, you talked about this, that for the old documents, what do we do with them? So immediately after we launch this wonderful system, um, we need to set up a digitization program. So this is here again. So this is, we need advanced scanners, book scanners, document scanners that we will use to digitize all these old research materials lying around the various departments and put them in into app. Now my third point, resources must be provided. Okay? So um, all these points are this is yet to capture all of them. So we need resources. For these IT people and library people to be effective, they will need laptops. They will need pen drives. They will need external disks. This will make them mobile. As far as managing an institutional repository is concerned, you must be mobile. I work at the University of Ghana. I work on Saturdays. I work on Sundays. Why? Because I have all these mobile devices that I use for my work. So there are other things. I get a call from management. Give us statistics on this. I quickly move. I send it over because the VC is traveling somewhere. We need to deliver and speak somewhere and need statistics. So the administrators at the end of the day must be mobile. I think you need that. Now, on the platform, this is just a screenshot of the platform will indicate to all of us who is publishing more and more and stuff. That screenshot over there, for instance, shows that the literal currency in ATU called Akakobi currently will be able to harvest 54 recent documents from it. And I think Prof is next on the list with 27. That's what we've been able to identify. So immediately we leave this place, we are heading straight to Prof's office. We are gathering all Prof's uh, publications and then we'll put them on the platform as well. This is what we currently have. So the way forward, Mr. Murphy has spoken a lot about that already. A development of the IR policy that is key to guide everybody. There's one interesting thing I'll say here. When we started the University of Ghana one in 2011, there was one lecturer who was like, Mr. Boya, I think it was a female brochure. He wanted me to put it on the platform. I said no. The only way I could defend myself was to hold that policy and tell the senior professor that I can't do this. So the policy will guide the administrators as to how to manage the platform. Either that, that people who can put this on the platform, put this also on the platform. So it's a policy that will guide everybody. Then we need to disseminate Echo app. So, um, straight from the top, management would have to, you know, uh, give that strong support to the library as far as the dissertation is concerned. We already have the business buying, so that's very key uh, for the dissertation. Then, uh, IT boss is here, so strong system and story support is very critical. I've already spoken about the fact that our next stage should be the digitization of the old documents that are lying around the various departments. Um, we need to acquire production standards uh, and other related devices. So basically, uh, that is info hub for you. It is the institutional repository of Accra Technical University. Thank you.
to prevent the collaborative the, the drift, to get all the bulletins of research publication of faculty for now. Then we're talking about uh, communities, communities, communities. So you see on the screen the communities of Infoha, painting with Infoha. So, so I mean, uh, and the library is going to say thank you to the opportunity for all the things you are So if you also want to be mentioned next time, you know, patronize the library so that you can do it. a lot of people So you can do it. So I'll call upon the opportunity to do the presentation so The first is Vera Kisegui, she is from the purchasing and supply department. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ifia Bwachiwa Mohimi Eji, MLS part-time level 400. Once again, 
I deem it great honor and privilege to be called upon to give the book of thanks on this special occasion. Let me first of all give glory to the Almighty God for making this program a resounding success. We extend our sincere gratitude to the Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Samuel Niodai, for leaving all his busy schedules to grace this wonderful occasion. We also thank the management and the invited guests, the Librarian of Central University, um, for honoring our invitation. We are also grateful to the speaker for such a wonderful speech. Your speech has enlightened and inspired us so much. We are also grateful to the lecturers for supporting the institutional repository. We also thank the LCLC executives and our wonderful students. You contributed immensely to the success of this program and we say thank you. I bow my head in gratitude to my colleagues for putting so much effort in making this program a success. We say are you go to everyone. Thank you all for being here. Lovely day to you and happy Valentine's Day. God bless you all. How many people will be able to come into the university at any time just to come and look for information? So creating that space, which we call the ATU info app, is critical because from anywhere our staff and students will be able to have access to information there. Now, in addition, that app itself gives us the opportunity to display or put our research out or our intellectual products on the website for others also to access and use. So that is very important for us. Um, the number one is not really visibility, but the ability for us to put the information out there, others to use, and then we ourselves will be able to access them at any time. Now the other one is the fact that um, the library is doing so well. So to come up with this idea, uh, we are very excited to have the Chronicle to tell us what they are doing beyond the university. We don't need to know what is happening. So for us, it's a great idea. Now for the information happening, uh, thank you. Yeah, you mentioned about how critical it is about the success of the school. But what actually have been the statistics or statements to place that actually can drive uh, us and the launch of That is true. Well, what exactly? Oh, the uh, information hub, as it says, um, other universities already have them. Um, KNAC has the D space, the University of Ghana also has the space. And it's important because um, that is how other institutions also get to know your research output. Apart from that, other institutions in terms of ranking of universities in this modern era also will go to your space to use this. And even when you want to go for grants, you apply for grants, they will really want to verify your capability or capacity in those areas. So it becomes more of an independent source, which is online, worldwide, for anyone to see. Rather than asking you for the information for you to send, they can go there and access. So it's really critical that it's become part of 
um, universities out that when you don't have it, I mean, you definitely lag behind. Before my last question, I just want to know from what you said, what, what do you think would be one of the key ingredients that you want to talk about? Okay, because this is a, a university, our, our, our key aim is to generate knowledge, which we call research, and then we pass this knowledge on to students by teaching, and then we apply this knowledge to the communities we live in, that is community service. So definitely for me, the key thing is for us to be able to be strong in generating knowledge, because the knowledge we generate, we generate is what will influence our teaching, influence our society. Yeah, my dear students, you know, I always love you. I'm very confident that with the setting up of the D space and the Chronicle, you make good use of them, and we look forward to seeing you in the world of work, very successful, and also having contributed to the space that we call Info House. God bless you. You seem to be loved by many of the students here. What do you think of the I may not be the best person to answer this question, but I love my students. So if there is anything, someone say that, then it's karma. <laughs> I love them, so maybe that is why maybe they care. Thank you so much. God bless you. So good morning everyone. My name is Professor Amevi Akapovi. I'm the Pro Vice Chancellor of Accra Technical University. It's my pleasure to associate myself with you this day, 14 February 2023. That we celebrate the chocolate day in the library of Accra Technical University. I must say over the, the recent past, the library has known a lot of vibrancy and innovation. There have been quite a lot of innovative programs that attracted the students, the staff, and the community at large. The library has known an unprecedented um, uh, support from all. People have really patronized the, the library in all that they do. And I must say that the Chocolate Day is not the first time we are celebrating it. It's about the second or the third times. And I must say that in the few previous years, just because of chocolate, we got a lot of people to come into the library and participate in all that we do. This year, with confidence and with zeal, I know that we shall know another success again. We have developed a lot of digital platform now to avail our content and collections to a wider public. And as you come in to pick a chocolate, remember to read a book, to check on a database and to connect with other people. Thank you very much. Never 